Welcome to The Drummer and the Great Mountain, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adults ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Michael Joseph Ferguson. On today's episode, we are starting a series on money. And so we are going to be covering how to manage, how to create, how to get our heads in a good space so that we can be prosperous versus constantly in fear about money. And part of what inspired this was I saw two of my coaching clients this last week have huge wins uh, based on some of the things that we're going to be talking about. So this is going to be a multi-episode series, and in this first episode, we're going to be discussing what are the common challenges we face being wired this way around money. And then we're going to go into how we perceive money and how that absolutely affects how we manage money, how we create money in our life. Then we're going to wrap up with an exercise that's going to really help you get clear about where you're at with money, as well as where you would like to go. And this will be the foundation for the next couple episodes. Okay, just one quick announcement. We're having our annual Gratitude Month book sale. So from now until November 19th, you'll be able to pick up a print copy of the book, The Drummer in the Great Mountain, at a significantly lower price than the Amazon price. So for those of you outside the U.S., this may be also helpful for you to offset your shipping costs. So to get the discounted price, just go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com and click on the purchase button at the top. So if you listen to this podcast, you probably fall into one of a few different categories as it relates to how you earn your money. Uh, One is you're an entrepreneur or an artist. You work for yourself. And so there's all the challenges and gifts that come with that lifestyle. Or two, you have a full-time job. That's what you're used to. You get your income from going to work for a company And you may have jumped from job to job, but you're used to having just one job that creates the bulk of the income you have on a monthly basis. Or maybe you have a hybrid of those two categories. Maybe you have a part-time job or multiple part-time jobs or multiple part-time jobs and a side hustle, some variation of those two things. So that you're used to both working for another person and getting a paycheck for that. And then you're also used to doing your own thing and having ways that you earn income that are completely within your control. Or maybe you're in the place where you have no job and no income source right now, and that's what's causing you a lot of suffering. You're in a funk. You've been stuck in a rut for a while. So let's start with the challenges. So to begin with, there's the global picture, right? There's the things the things that everyone's concerned about right now. So that's inflation, gas prices, food prices, housing costs going up. So that's all playing in the background, right? But for us specifically, the big challenges that we face regularly being wired this way are overwhelm and procrastination, right? So that's procrastinating. Uh, We want to sit down and look at our finances, but then we feel stressed. We distract ourselves. Nothing gets done. 
And because of that overwhelm and procrastination, not knowing where you're at financially becomes a big issue. Another challenge is follow through and consistency. So that's not paying our bills on time, not getting our taxes done, uh, being late on them, not saving money because you're having a, a challenge following through on intentions that you have. So all of that becomes a big deal, can become a big deal if you don't have systems in place or support for it. There's also impulsiveness. So for many of us, that's having no budget, uh, overspending. So when we get see an ad in front of us of something we really want, we just Without thinking about it, we just move ahead and spend the money. And for those of us who are entrepreneurs, there's the pie in the sky, get rich quick thing that tends to happen with us. We're like, oh, I can just do this thing and I'll make a ton of money. Or it's the next stimulating thing. And so we don't finish the things we start. And because of that, we don't see the benefit and the satisfaction of our labors that we've already put into other projects. And then just in general, getting caught up in stimuli and not following through. So something's really enticing for us in the moment. We we work on it and then we didn't anticipate how long this thing would take. That's a big one that if you're an entrepreneur, you know that one. It's like, oh, I thought this would take X amount of time and this is taking exponentially longer. That's a huge deal. And that also is connected in with impulsiveness. Then there's just the tendency to work in bursts. So for many of us who are entrepreneurs or work for ourselves, then it's the feast and famine, right? So you get excited, you've got some energy, and then you have to rest, and then you notice that the income starts to drop. Now, if you work at a job, the challenges are slightly different. You may have some of those previous ones that I just mentioned, but uh, also attached to that maybe the shame of not being able to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish at your job. So you feel like the, there's struggles that you have, uh, especially the ADHD struggles that keep you from doing your job well. And then as a result, you don't feel the respect that you deserve for what for the work you do, as well as not being able to get the support you need or have the self-esteem to say, okay, I need this, this, and this, and then I can do really well with my job. And so not setting boundaries, not honoring yourself, all affects your ability to increase your salary and get clear about what it is that you really want moving forward. So all of the challenges that I just mentioned equate to anxiety. And that anxiety can cripple us from seeing the potential solutions in moving forward. It keeps us from moving forward because we're stuck. And we need to take a hard, clear look at what has been causing us challenges around money so that we can make clear changes moving forward that are going to increase our prosperity and reduce our anxiety around money. Okay, so that was a mouthful, and so and we all know what those challenges are, but to just hear them spoken out loud may be helpful because you might hear, oh, like, yeah, that's definitely me. Okay, so but those those are the challenges. What are the benefits of being wired the way we're wired? So there's a couple key ones, and we're going to put those to work in this episode and in future episodes. So the first and most important asset we have being wired this way is our creativity. There's one thing I know for certain because I've worked with thousands of you at this point is that we are very, very creative individuals and we need to put our creativity to work to make us money. We're also very resourceful. We think outside the box. We're willing to start new things. Our hyper focus can often be a real asset to us in making money. And when we're inspired, we can be unstoppable. So when we're talking about money, it's so important to take a step back and look at our belief systems around money and how we perceive ourselves and how we value ourselves. Because those two things, our perception of money and how we value ourselves, has everything to do with creating a prosperous lifestyle where you have less stress around money. So let's start by discussing why does money create such anxiety? Specifically, why is it that when we feel like we don't have enough money, we get really, really anxious? So it's important to recognize that finances connect in with security and safety. 
And as soon as those get triggered inside of us, we are hardwired to feel anxious and pretty much get into fight or flight. Cortisol and adrenaline gets pumped into our veins and we feel like there's something we need to do to protect ourselves because we're in, there's some danger, there's some threat that we need to manage or focus on to keep ourselves safe. So in the modern world, the big challenge is money has become so completely abstract. So our ancestors, uh, survival was dependent on us being, you know, being able to create shelter for ourselves, hunting and gathering, knowing where the fresh water sources were. That's how we managed survival. And that's many, many tens of thousands of years. And so our modern lifestyle of 100 to 200 years being, you know, living in this way, and especially the last 50 to 100 years, everything has become completely abstract. So now instead of survival and security coming from uh, building shelters and hunting and gathering, now we go to a job or we work from home and money is not even physical anymore. It's often just deposited into your bank account. So literally survival is connected to you staring at a glowing screen and looking at a number. So it's important to recognize that there's a deeper part of our brain that, that doesn't understand that. And because of that, there's a lot of anxiety because the fight or flight mechanism gets triggered. So it's important for us to have a dialogue with ourselves to define what does survival really mean? Do you have a roof over your head? Do you have food? Do you have shelter? Those are things that are important to that part of your brain. And when you can start to get in touch with this, you can de-escalate the anxiety by defining what is survival. Are you safe? If you're safe, you can tell that part of your brain to quiet down so that the creative part of your brain can boot up and come up with solutions to your current financial challenge. So much of this episode and future episodes on money, I'm going to come back to one specific reference, which is an audio series called Prosperity Consciousness by Frederick Lehrman. And I will leave a link in the description on how to get it. You can get it on Audible. Um, and there's so many key things that I've taken from this one audio series, and I've recommended to many, many, many of my clients, and they constantly tell me how much it's helped them. So I want to give credit where credit is due. So much of these concepts came from that particular series. Uh, and I've found them in other places, but that's the best single source that I've found for getting clear about your thought forms around money, how you perceive money, and how when you change those thought forms, how much that can affect your prosperity. I can speak for myself and how that has affected me personally, but I can also see the impact that that specific audio series has had on many of my clients. So when we're talking about strategies of how to increase our income, we need to discuss what is money? What is it actually? It used to be even, you know, as I grew up, I mean, it was paper bills. Like you'd have a, a dollar and you'd say, okay, that's a dollar. That's what money is. I can point to it and say, that's money. But now, I mean, money is now numbers on a screen. It's bare, like we barely use physical money anymore. So what is money? So I want to read to you from my book, Drummer on the Great Mountain, uh, page 113. It's in the life visioning chapter. I feel like this kind of defines it. So I'm just going to read straight from the book. Money as energy and gratitude. Unless you live in the woods, forge for your food and make your own clothing, you need money as a part of your daily survival. In its most basic form, money represents energy. Each of us has more energy than we need to manage our day-to-day -day lives. We offer this excess energy to others, often in the form of some service. With any job you've ever worked for, on a primary level, you are lending your excess energy to another person or organization to assist them in some way. In exchange, the gratitude for our service was expressed in the form of money. Therefore, energy converts to service, converts to gratitude, converts to money. This is an entirely different way of perceiving money than most of us were taught as children, which looked more like job equals money. Seeing money from this broader perspective can unlock a whole host of hidden opportunities. The question becomes, how do I use my talents and abilities to help others in a way that truly provides them value? 
This concept of money as energy is crucial in transforming your relationship with money. Most of us, and I know just watching and working with so many different coaching clients, we get caught up in the abstract and we don't get clear about, okay, what am I actually doing that creates money? What is actually happening? What's the exchange? Why are we even doing this as humans? Why are you going to a location and spending eight hours? What is the point of that? What is happening in that exchange? So there's two key principles here. One, Money is energy. And two, to the degree that you can meet the needs of others, effectively solve problems, reduce their suffering in some way, you will earn money. And so connected to this, if you do not value yourself and value the service that you provide to others and you do not charge enough for it, that is also adversely affecting your income. So one of the key things we need to look at as we're exploring how to transform our relationship around money is the limiting belief systems we've adopted from our family growing up. What were our belief systems around money? So let's look at a few of these. One is we may have been brought up to think that money is in short supply. There is there is a scarcity around money. Therefore, we have to be very, very diligent to make sure that we're okay because there's only so much to go around. So is that true? The reality is everybody has money. It's one of the most abundant things in the world. Every Almost every human being has money because money is energy, right? So money isn't scarce. That's the truth, that money is, if you give someone a reason to give you money, it, they're, everyone's walking around with money. So therefore, money is not scarce. That perception is false. Another limiting belief we may have adopted from our family around money has something to do with rich people are bad. We, we don't have a lot of money, but we're good, and then people who have money are bad. Something in, in that vein, that's the thought form. And If you have that thought, then there's going to be a part of your subconscious that's going to say, I can't really have a lot of money because if I have money, then I'm bad because rich people are bad. Now, that all sounds very simplistic, but these parts of our subconscious are very simple. They make very simple equations, and these little thoughts can carry out into our adult life. And it's important to look at them. And you need to look at that thought and go, okay, money is actually energy. It's neither good nor bad. Yes, there are people that have a lot of money that absolutely do not use it well and cause a lot of people suffering. That is absolutely true. But there's also people that have a lot of money that do a lot of good because that energy that they have in the form of money can go out into social programs, helping others and supporting other people. And again, just transforming the way you look at money can be hugely beneficial. And I've watched, I know this all sounds very conceptual, but I've watched it really transform my own life and then seeing other people go through this process and coming out the other side, making more money because they addressed some of these core subconscious belief patterns. And again, I want to refer you back to prosperity consciousness, Frederick Lehrman. He does an excellent job at excavating these and getting to a place where you can shift your mindset so that you're not working against yourselves. Because if you, barring all the ADHD challenges, if you don't have some of these key concepts in place, you may be fighting against yourself. Okay, now that we've addressed our subconscious and our limited perceptions around money, and we've transformed it into looking at money as energy, it's important to now come back down to the ground and say, where am I at right now? If you're feeling anxious about money, chances are you're not absolutely clear where your money is at. Based on all of the people that I work with, most of you probably have some challenge with actually sitting down and looking at where are my finances what are, where am I actually at? So when you know exactly where you're at, you have power. You have, you have power to transform your life. If you don't know where you're at, you're, you're guaranteed to be in anxiety around it. So I'm going to give you two exercises. The first one's going to be where you're at around money. And the second is going to be you setting for yourself an income goal that breaks down 
bigger numbers into more manageable numbers so your subconscious can get a hold of them and start to get creative in terms of solutions and ways to expand your income. So this first exercise is asking yourself, where am I at right now financially? And so uh, there's a few ways you can do this. You can either do this on a sheet of paper. Ideally, you do this in a spreadsheet. Spreadsheets are actually very simple. They're not that complicated. And I will leave, leave a link to a YouTube video that's a very simple tutorial on how to use spreadsheets. You can use Google Sheets. You can use Microsoft Excel. Uh, you can use uh, LibreOffice, which is free. Um, so that's ideal. If you can do it with a spreadsheet, then it's going to be a tool that you may take a little time to make, but then in the longer term, it'll be simpler because you'll understand how it works because you created it. If you can't do that, you might want to use a mind map. Mind maps can be awesome at doing simple breakdowns of numbers in a way that is, that may be more manageable to you and less overwhelming than um, in a spreadsheet. So mind map is also an option, or you can just do this on a sheet of paper. So it's you choose how you do it. I will explain the exercise and then you can uh, decide what's the best way you would like to do it. So on the left side of your spreadsheet or your document, you want to put the income and what you have. So basically on the left side is where you like, what's your regular income and what assets do you currently have? So at the very top, I would put your bank accounts and how much are in those bank accounts. So list those out one by one, give them a name. And then to the column to the right of it, or however you want to do it, write your current amount of how much you have today in that account, down to the penny if you can. Below that, you want to put your assets. So that could be your car. If you own a home, put your home in there. Anything that you own that you would note as an asset, a boat maybe that you own that's worth more than $1,000, list your assets and to the right of them, put how much they're currently worth. Below that then is your income, your monthly income listed by source. So if you're just getting income from a job, then you have one line that's just going to say, you know, paycheck from job or however you want to phrase it and then put a number. This is what you get per month from your job. Now, if you're an entrepreneur, you're going to have a list of different income sources. So for me, it would be something like coaching, book sales, workshops, etc. So this is where it gets a little tricky. So you have to look at what am I averaging per month in each of these categories and look back to the last month or the last two months to get a number that feels right to you. We say this is the average income I'm getting per month from this source. So again, the left side of this spreadsheet or your sheet of paper is your income and your assets. That's all of like what you have and what's coming in. On the right side is expenses. This is the money that's going out. So the right side is money going out per month. And you want to start with fixed expenses. So that's the, the easiest thing you can, you can start with is what do I know doesn't change every month? So that might be rent payment. That might be car payment. Whatever that list is, start with your fixed expenses and then move down to your variable expenses. Those are expenses that change every month. So you want to get a rough idea of what's going out per month in that category. And in the variable expenses, this is where we get into how do I shift my impulsiveness? Am I giving myself a budget for these categories? This is where we start to explore it. But what I want to encourage you to do is look back at least at the last month and ask yourself in the category of entertainment, how much did I spend? In the category of travel, what did I spend? In the category of fun purchases, let's just call that a category. What did I spend? Look back and look back at your credit card receipts. What did you spend money on? And get a sense and see if you can put each of those in a category so that you can contain it. You can look at it and go, okay, I know that when I'm impulsive, I spend money on this. And so in this part of my life, I may have to start creating a budget for myself. But first, you just want to be honest with yourself and say, what did I spend per month last month on that particular category? So that you have it for reference, here's some categories that you may want to think about when you're putting together your expenses. So that's housing, transportation, food, utilities, insurance, 
medical and health care, debt payments, personal spending, recreation and entertainment, and miscellaneous, like anything that doesn't fit in any of those categories. Now, once you're done listing your expenses, you want to add all that up and get to a number that says, this is what my expenses are per month. And getting to that one number is extremely powerful because it gives you an idea of what you need to make in order to feel comfortable, peaceful, safe, stable. That number gives you peace of mind. So spend some time working on it until you get to a number where you're clear that this is how much I need to make per month for me to feel like life is good. So the point of all this is to know where am I at? Here's where my income is. Here are my assets on the left and on my right. Here are my monthly expenses. When you have that, you have an idea now of where your finances are at. That's what it looks like. It looks like you sitting down at a spreadsheet and looking at it or filling in some numbers and saying, this is where I'm at. And from there, you have power because you can look at how do I increase the left side of the sheet and how do I reduce the right side of the sheet? Now, some of you might want to get to this through using an app like Mint or YNAB, you need a budget. Uh, Those are also ways you can get to this. But the goal is you sit down and you say, here's what I have, here's my regular income, and here are my expenses. That's the goal. When you have that, you have power and you have an ability to transform your financial life. If you're running away from that, it's going to be really hard to make positive change in your financial life. So that's exercise number one. The second exercise is very simple. Based on what you just did, you're going to come up with your yearly income goal, and then you're going to break that down to your monthly income goal. Then you're going to break that down to your weekly income goal. So my suggestion is start with your monthly goal because that's what you've been working with on the previous spreadsheet. So you want to look at, okay, based on my expenses and what I currently earn right now, How much income do I need to feel comfortable, relaxed, and everything is handled? Really trust your your body on this one and ask it, okay, what what do I need? So based on here's my expenses, here's, here's the end number that I need per month. I've added up all of those numbers in the expense column per month, and I say, okay, based on that, I need X amount per month to feel really relaxed, money is going into savings, and I have an abundance of money left over. What does that number look like? Start with that number, times it by 12, and that's your yearly goal. Next, take that yearly number and divide it by 52. 52 weeks in the year, that gives you your weekly financial goal. So once you get your weekly number, that number should feel far more in reach than your monthly or yearly goal. If you're thinking just from a from a sheer, like I understand how much energy is necessary to create that number, or at least it, it's much more clear than that yearly number. So if you work for yourself, then you might wanna then break that down into billable hourly. So if you work for yourself, you know that you're gonna put in more hours than are billable. So if you're trying to work out your hourly rate, you might wanna take your weekly number, what's your weekly goal? And then say, okay, I need to hit that number per week. And now if I break down, well, let's say I work five days a week, and let's say I can put in five billable hours per day, you can start to calculate how much money you need to make per hour to get you to your weekly goal, which gets you to your monthly goal, which gets you to your yearly goal. Okay, so once you've done those two exercises, First off, big congratulations. That's a huge leap forward in you getting clear about your financial life. If you've spent the time to do that, pause this episode, go back, listen to it again, just go through it as many times as you need to in order to get to those two exercises because they're the culmination of a lot of what we discussed up to this point. You need to know what those numbers are in order to move to what we'll be talking about in the next episode, which is how do you put your creativity to work to get you a higher income and reduce your expenses. So I hope that was helpful. Again, if you don't have a print copy of the book, The Drummer in the Great Mountain, we are holding our annual Gratitude Month sale. Just visit drummerinthegreatmountain.com and click on the purchase button at the top. So that's it. I hope that was helpful. And until next time, 
be well. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about the book, The Drummer and the Great Mountain, visit drummerandthegreatmountain.com. To join us on social media, click the links at the top of the homepage. Help us spread the word. We're a small press and reviews really help. If you've been enjoying the podcast or the book, consider writing a review on iTunes, Amazon, Goodreads or your podcast app. If you're new to the podcast and want to quickly get up to speed on the concepts we discuss, check out our free five-day mini course. Visit drummerandthegreatmountain.com forward slash mini course. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover on future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please send us an email at info at drummerandthegreatmountain.com.